Having taken the history and examined this lady today, can you tell me your findings? This lady presents with lethargy and daytime somnolence, with features in the history consistent with sleep apnea. These features are in association with headaches and an increase in hand and foot size. On examination, um, there was evidence of this increase in soft tissue swelling in the hands, feet and in the face. There was a clear overbite of the jaw and splaying of the teeth. Phelan's test was positive and this is in keeping with bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome. Important negatives are a lack of proximal myopathy, normal visual fields, visual acuity and fundoscopy. Um, and importantly, the history hinted at a potential um, thyroid disease. However, the pulse was approximately 74 beats per minute and regular. There was no tremor and there was an absence of any goiter. My diagnosis, therefore, is one of acromegaly in association with sleep apnea and bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome. What investigations would you perform in this lady? I'd like a full set of observations, including um, blood pressure to look for hypertension, but also importantly, a resting pulse oximetry. Um, I'd then like to proceed to request an overnight sleep study in terms of this patient's potential sleep apnea. In regards to the palpitations, I'd like to request a baseline ECG, as well as a TSH level. I may well then want to go on to performing a 24-hour um, tape. In regards to the potential acromegaly, I'd request a baseline insulin-like growth factor 1, and I'd expect this to be raised. I'd then proceed to doing a glucose tolerance test, and I'd expect this to show failure of suppression of growth hormone. Lastly, I'd want to request an MRI scan of the brain with specific pituitary views looking for a pituitary adenoma. What other organs can be affected in acromegaly? Several organs can be affected in acromegaly. Um, there is a risk of cardiovascular disease, more specifically ischemic heart disease and cardiomyopathy. There can also um, be complications in terms of type 2 diabetes and hypertension. And importantly, there can be visual impairments. Classically, there is um, bitemporal hemianopia, which can have important social and driving implications on patients. Explain why patients get uh, hemianopia. So bitemporal hemianopia occurs because of compression from the adenoma on the optic chiasm. What treatments are available for such patients? The mainstay of treatment is via surgery, and the primary approach is via a transphenoidal resection, which aims to be curative. Second line medical therapy um, consists of dopamine agonists such as bromocryptine or somatostatin analogues such as ocreotide. Third line treatments that we might consider are radiotherapy to the pituitary gland. What are the potential complications of surgical intervention? The main complication to warn patients of is that of panhypopituitarism. You mentioned this patient may have obstructive sleep apnea. Why is this associated with acromegaly? Acromegaly causes an increase in soft tissue swelling, especially around the neck, the jaw, and within the mouth itself. The resulting mechanical complication of that is of sleep apnea, especially when patients lie down at night. How would obstructive sleep apnea be treated in this case? A surgical resection um, of the adenoma would hopefully result in a reduction in the soft tissue swelling around the neck. So the hope is that um, the patient would then therefore no longer have um, obstructive sleep apnea. However, in the interim, or if um, this problem continued, we could consider CPAP. Thank you. Thank you.